Hey everyone, I've got something I'm really excited about to show you today. It's a sneak peek at a project I've been working on for over two years. It's the 3D print mill. Now, mill in this case is like steel mill or lumber mill or a machine that produces a lot of things. Not like mill as in milling machine. That's a different mill. Because this is intended for small scale shop and garage manufacturing, I really wanted the name to reflect a sense of industry. This is a pre-production unit the factory just sent over for me to unbox. I am estimating it's about 80 to 90% of the way finished. While I tell you about it, let's unbox it and see if that's true. Okay, let's see what we've got. So, like usual, all the tools you need to assemble the printer is in the bag. Small roll of sample filament, some screws, filament bracket, Display, power cord, and it's the gantry um, all the parts to for the printer. What this is, is a combination conveyor belt and 3D printer, otherwise known as an infinite C 3D printer. Now machines like this have been around in different forms for a while. The idea for them goes back to 2008 in the red red forms, but I first heard about them back in 2016 when Bill still show off both DLP and FDM Infinity C 3D printer designs. Then a short while after that, Broom done work with Bill to make the printer belt. After that, Carl Brown aka Narx 3D made the White Knight, the first really viable open source Infinite C 3D printer kit. So while this design is original, of course like all 3D printers these days, it's built on work that come before it. And of course, in turn I intend to open source this design so that others can build on it and continue the cycle of innovation. Anyway, as soon as I saw prototypes of 3D printers like this, I was amazed and like a lot of people, I wanted one. The problem was only one company was selling an infinite C 3D printer, Black Belt 3D. And while they have a great product, it's $14,000 worth every penny. Their link is in the description box pretty far out of my budget. So there was no way I could buy one. But unlike a lot of people, I have access to Shenzhen's manufacturing ecosystem and a good track record promoting and open sourcing designs like the Enderfree, which is now the best selling 3D printer in the world. So back 
in 2018, I set up meetings and started pushing my sponsors at Creality to make an infinite C3D printer. I invited Bill Steele to the factory to talk about having him design one. That didn't work out. Chinese companies don't like to be early to market with unproven designs. But I kept pushing and eventually Creality agreed to let me head up a sort of scumworks project to work with the engineers to build my own. I didn't want to interfere with Carl selling his kit for the white knight. So this isn't his design. But when I started having questions about how to make it better, he was kind enough to come on as an, a consultant and really push things to the next level. So those of you who worried about copy designs, sure, I know where you're coming from, but please ask around in the community. Ask Carl, ask Bill, see if it's an original design that builds on their work before you jump to any conclusions. Everything I did was with permission, respect, and attribution. I'll do a full list of the history of this design in a later video. If you know anything about me, you know how seriously I take these things. I've watched how Chinese companies work for years. You've seen me fight for us to do better. And now that I'm finally managing my own project, I'm putting a lot of effort into making sure I do this the right way. Not just abiding by license agreements, but also respecting the people who did the groundwork. Kindly show some support for that so others see that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And it matters what choice they make. Okay, let's try printing. Alright, a few thoughts. Who is this printer for? If you want to make 1 to 10 of something, a normal 3D printer like the CR10 version 2 or the End of Free version 2 still probably makes the most sense. But if you want to make 10 to 1000 of something, that's something the 3D print mill can do better than any other manufacturing option on the market today. If you want to make fewer of something that then makes sense for injection molding, but it's also far cheaper and much lesser labor intensive than running a print farm with conventional 3D printers. This is the best game in town. It is ideal for small business. You can run off 100 crowns each with a different kid's name on them for a birthday party or all kinds of specialty functional prints. There are a lot of niche 3D printed products being sold online right now and this makes them much more cost effective to produce in quantity with far less labor. And you don't have to worry about having your tooling used without your permission and having your expensive design sold for less on AliExpress or anything like that. Infinity 3D printers like this have the potential to be an absolute game changer for small scale manufacturing and they keep your design files and IP out of other people's hands. It is also perfect for cosplay swords and spears, no more gluing three or more sections together. 
all the extra sanding and worrying about them coming apart. This can make a strong print larger than the printer itself. So how far along is this? Now this is my baby so I have zero objectivity but let me tell you my thoughts. I'm happy with the build quality, interface and basic functionality. You can see on this pre-production version, some parts haven't been anodized, but that's a small thing. I'm trying to keep this under $1,000, so there's not a lot of room to get too fancy. Like every new Creality 3D printer design I've ever looked at, the print quality at this stage is not really acceptable. I'm not going to lie to you. See, drooping filaments, stuff like that, nothing I'm worried about just usual software stuff that's completely normal at this stage of development. Normally, that's left up to the community to fix, but I don't really want to do things that way. Nothing is being offered for sale until I run off a bin of really clean benchables and assorted other standard calibration prints. It needs to have the same quality of at least the end of free. Carl aka Nars 3D, the creator of the White Knight, worked on the 3D Premiere iteration before this one and got it all dialed in. And he just got this same model and sent me a list of things he'd like to see changed. You can see more of his tests over on his channel, the link is in the description box. There is a roller attachment coming so you can print very long objects. This is perfect for those cosplay swords and spears I was talking about. I'd also like to offer something for holding 5kg filament rolls. Also at the moment, if you want 100 copies of something, you set that in the slicing software. I'd like to be able to have one object's G-code on the card and set with the printer interface how many copies of it to print. When can you buy one? Again, there have been complaints in the past about Creality releasing printers before they are ready and then leaving it up to the community to fix all the problems or having to ship replacement parts. I really don't want to do that. My feeling is it will take about two months until this is something I'm willing to put my name on and my reputation behind. See, that's the box art. Literally, my name is on it. I know many of you are eager to buy one, but this is going to be my first Kickstarter and there will be a lot of eyes on it. I want to do this right. I don't want to ruin the market for bell printers by releasing something shorty just because it's fixable. But I'll shoot more videos and Carl has been shooting videos so you'll be able to see how things progress. That's it for today. If you're interested in the 3D Premiere, the best way to stay up to date is to hit subscribe and notify. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.